Hey there folks, uh, welcome to Tech Tuesday. Today we're going to be talking about DOCSIS PNM and how to find an impairment in your cable plant, especially a common impairment is what we're going to talk about today and we'll be right with you. Thanks for joining us. I'm Rick Yuzzi from Zcorm. Here with me is network engineer Tim Smith. And uh, we're back because <laughs> If you tried to join us last week, we were going to talk about the same topic. In fact, we did talk about this topic, yep. and we were brilliant, I might add. Uh, we said all kinds of really interesting and great things, but unfortunately the slide that we were showing uh, was a slide from the week before when I was here with Pete. Olivia talking about OFDM, and somehow that wound up on the screen as we were talking. So I'm hoping that doesn't happen this week. Uh, hopefully not. Uh, but anyway... That's which is kind of interesting because the other time we had kind of a mess up like that was Carlos and I, and we were talking about PNM. I can't remember what the topic was, and during that one we had some really great slides up on the screen, but there was no audio. audio. So we could probably have put those two things together, and that would have been interesting. Right. So. Anyway, we're again we're talking about uh, DOCSIS PNM today. Which uh, one thing I started out with last week was uh, DOCSIS PNM. It's well, it's a it's kind of a science. It's also an art. There's an art form to it in using the, the technology, right? Definitely. And it's uh, the, the art part comes in as you know your plant, you understand how things are laid out. So um, there's, there's the math involved, mm -hmm. and then there's the common sense or you know, being a little intuitive about how things operate in your own cable plant. Mm -hmm. so. And I think we've, we've discovered things as we've gone along, and people that have developed this technology have discovered. So today what we're going to be looking at is a situation where, uh, Tim, you were helping one of our affiliate operators that, mm -hmm. that noticed a correlation group. So uh, why don't we go ahead and look at that. Okay. Okay, so uh, you should right. be able to start here. Yeah, we can go ahead and start. Um, we had an affiliate come to us, and they were asking for some assistance in a correlation group identification. And it was a really small correlation group that showed up. It was only four modems included in it. And they wanted to know how they should go about trying to troubleshoot this. Um, the one thing that we did notice that was very good was the fact that the in-channel frequency response, the top of the haystack for each of the modems, was being pre-distorted um, almost identically for every one of the modems. So this led us along the lines of we're looking at something that's very common and it has a definite signature involved. And then something I'm seeing here on this particular correlation group, the, we've got the four modems that are identified in the, the dark blue. And then there's gray modems around. A lot of times when you see a correlation group, you'll see uh, all of the modems on a street or in a particular area are being impacted by the same impairment because they're all sharing that same piece of cable. But here, we're not seeing that, right? Right, we're not seeing that, um, but it's, a, it's almost a little misleading. All the gray modems that are showing up here share the same upstream, but they're, they're not reporting as the same impairment. So that was kind of what was throwing our affiliate a little bit. Um, and as we go through the slides, this will show a little bit more about how you have to kind of be smarter than the software sometimes. Um, this does the hard part, the math for you, but you've got to understand where your plant is and where things are laid out. Mm -hmm. okay. So, um, where's the next, can just tip right next one? Okay. Yeah. All right. So. It should work anyway. Hold on. All right, well, let's figure out why it's not working. It's kind of just clicking. There we go. Okay, all right, great. All right, so we were looking at the, the four modems, and here they are. As we actually brought up the correlation group, and all four of the modems showed um, it, uh, an elevated main tap compression, which is how hard the modems are working. Um, we noticed that they were all on the same upstream frequency, which defines part of the correlation group. They need to be on the same upstream frequency. Mm -hmm. And then the thing that everybody wants to find is, here, let's find this common echo chamber of roughly around 300 feet, mm -hmm. um, give or take 50 feet uh, for margin of error. Um, so we look at the top of the screen here, and we can see that the in-channel frequency response is lined up, and we can see that the digital taps are showing an elevated taps um, 11 and 12, but they also, just about all of them have an elevated tap 9. So what we're looking at here on the digital taps, um, if this were a perfect situation, which it never is, but if it were perfect, what you're looking for is all of the energy be going through tap 8, right? Correct. And as you see these other taps adjusting, it's the equalizers or slices of this spectrum that are being adjusted for mm -hmm. the impairment, right? Correct. Yeah, these are the basically the time. How, how far ahead do I have to get my signal elevated so that it meets a zero sum coming back to the CMTS? Mm -hmm. 
and then when we're looking at uh, TAP 9, that's usually in very close to the home. Right. Exactly. TAPs 9 and 10 generally um, show up as in-home, near-home issues. Mm -hmm. These are things right close to the cable modem, right close to the drop, uh, the ground block, things like that. So, or extended wiring in the home that's acting as an antenna. Okay. All right, so we've got these four modems. They all seem to be correlated. Mm -hmm. So what we did was we picked one of the modems down here, and then we said, okay, show me the modems that are nearby. Um, and that's actually a feature on the tool. And when it showed us the modems that were nearby, it lit up a bunch of red modems. Mm -hmm. And we thought, okay, well, let's start being a little in inquisitive here and intuitive and start to look at, well, what do these red modems have in common? And when we started individualizing some of these modems and zooming in, we discovered, okay, we're in a very tight group with all these modems. Mm -hmm. Let's see if there's anything that's common to them. So when we started looking, we noticed that all the modems on their 24 megahertz channel had this very similar signature to what we were looking for. Mm -hmm. Now it looks a little compressed because we're looking at all three of the upstream signals right now, but when we stretch this out, it'll follow the same pattern that the ones in the correlation group are following. So we're seeing that two of these, uh, cha not channels, I guess, frequencies are upstreams are mm -hmm. looking good because they're in the green. Exactly, staying mm -hmm. in the green. Mm -hmm. And then we've got this one that's wildly outside it. Mm -hmm. And so we started looking at the tap responses. These start to line up as well. Now we're looking at all the modems. So we can say, okay, well, let's see what's elevated. We've got, once again, this t elevated taps 11 and 12 mm -hmm. and an elevated tap 9. The elevated tap 9 issue can be masking what's further out in the plant, mm -hmm. the near home issue. So your near home is masking a, maybe the common mm -hmm. impairment. Exactly. And something else that's interesting here is you've got this ramp on the left side. Now, a lot of times that indicates grip delay. Is that right? Correct. Well, anything to the left of tap 8 um, shows that the modem is actually dealing with some group delay, so he's actually having to send signals higher and earlier to try to overcome group delay, which mm -hmm. are going to be things that start affecting uh, especially your streaming services, things along the lines of streaming video or voice calls, things like that. Mm -hmm. um, group delay starts to get and impact those fairly fairly heavily. So as we started looking at other modems that were in the group, we picked another one, and we noticed he's got the same That's signature. The same. Um, and he's got the same elevated taps. So as we keep on going through here, we're like, okay, so let's zoom in just on the 24 megahertz, and this is a very similar signature to what we've been noticing in, this, in the correlation group. Once again, an elevated tap 9, masking what's actually elevated to tap 11 and 12. Mm -hmm. So, um, and after going through all of these modems, <laughs> we we kind of took the map and I did some work for them and uh, started checking all the modems, and all of the modems to the left of this DMARC line um, seem to be in, with the same in-channel frequency response. So we've got a common impairment, a same signature, same elevated taps. Mm -hmm. So really, if all the in-home and near-home issues were taken care of, all of these modems would show up in the same correlation group. So as you look on the other side of this DMARC line, you've got a couple of these yellow modems. When you looked at those, they, they did not look at all like these others that are in this group, right? No, their signatures were definitely uh, different. And including this, this red modem, we were like, well, is he involved? He's red as well. His was just due to near home and in home issues. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so as our DMARC line was, went along this street right here, mm -hmm. We determined that wherever the problem was was going to be something to the left of this question mark, not to the right. And using their actual strand map, we were able to determine that we had an echo cavity that when we added the, everything together, it came up to just short of uh, 270 feet, which is inside our 50 foot area of uh, give or take mm -hmm. our area of correction. Um, we further directed our affiliate to look at this particular tap and this amplifier right here, tap 29 and this amplifier. Um, and they were actually found that this lead-in tap right here was actually bad, um, leading to this amplifier. Because mm -hmm. the amp actually powers things to going to the right of it also, in addition to the left. Left is really where we're having problems, but everything coming out to this side was not part of it. So it wasn't the whole amp that was bad, but it was actually this end of it, mm -hmm. um, tap 29, where we discovered the problem. They were actually able to replace it, and once they did, 
everything went from red to yellow. Um, so they were quite happy with their their results that they came across. So, and, and something else to kind of mention here is that as we're looking at this, again, if we've got our issue right here and we've got all of these modems that are affected, they're each showing a similar VTTR mm -hmm. because it's what that's looking at is the echo cavity that all of these modems are sharing. So you're not measuring, when you're measuring something, you're not measuring necessarily from um, any of these modems. You're, you're looking at the last good modem, is that right? Yes, yeah, so you, you, you right? if you're looking at really for the last bad modem, the first good modem, right. the first <clears throat> modems that actually define your area. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, and this is this kind of, the light kind of went on with, for our affiliate where they understood that how could all these modems have the same um, distance. distance to the problem, yeah. and it really, they understood then that it wasn't from the modem, it was, we're looking for a span that is common to all these modems mm -hmm. that was around 300 feet. This one happened to be 270 feet. Mm -hmm. um, so once again, there were very limited um, places that we could see were the last modem that was in the group mm -hmm. versus the first modem that wasn't in the group. And we're looking, and there were the number of devices that were in there that could be actively broadcasting or causing this, uh, this bounce in the cable. Um, was very small, uh, so we really only had about six items that we could have looked at, and inside the the range of our 300 foot cavity, we only had about three. Mm -hmm. So that's how they were able to quickly narrow it down. Yeah. Now sometimes it can be something like this where it's uh, on an act, I guess, on an active device, mm -hmm. um, or it could be. I mean, your echo cavity can also be a piece of a strand of, strand of the cable. It could be a bend in the cable or nick nick that's got some water in it. Right. Or... Yeah. Usually, in, in, what you're going to end up with is um, it's it can be uh, there's going to be something that's active, whether it's an amplifier, a modem, or whatever. But it's got to be generating the signal. Then it doesn't necessarily hit another active. It can hit a break in the line. It can hit a splice in the cable. It can hit um, corrosion. Those are the things that can cause the other boundary of the echo cavity. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's an important thing to note. And you mentioned, uh, you know, how these in-home, near-home problems could be causing. Uh, let me go. Let me exit out of here for just a second. So, how that could be causing uh, issues where you, you know, they're masking the, the correlation group. Exactly. So um, this kind of explains why it's important for you to kind of attack those in-home, near-home problems as well, which pre-equalization analyzer or DOCSIS PNM tool will identify. Right. As, as red modems. And it's important also to note that a red modem in a tool like Pre-Equalization Analyzer, which is a DOCSIS proactive network maintenance tool, is different from a red modem in TrueVision, for example, which is a diagnostics tool that's looking at the signal and not, not the pre-EQ value. Correct. Um, the pre-equalization the pre tool is removing the pre-equalization coefficients that this cable, the, the CMTS, uh, cable modem termination system actually applies to the modem and says, here's where I need you to pre-adjust. Mm -hmm. If we remove those coefficients and remove those settings, then this is what the plant would look like. Yeah. Um, and then we would be having a lot more problems. Right. Um, Pre-equalization is a good tool. It helps as far as customer and uh, end user experience, but it does not correct any problems. It just hides the problem. It kind of masks it. So uh, that's why having pre-equalization analyzer is important because you can actually see where those problems are. So those customers that had, quote, red modems might not be experiencing an issue because pre-EQ is compensating for that and it's adjusting the cable modem. And if you were to look at the in-channel frequency response before and then after, a lot of times after, it's a straight line. It looks mm -hmm. really good mm -hmm. to the CMTS. So because of that, um, again, when you see a red modem in, in pre-equalization analyzer, it doesn't necessarily mean that that customer is having a bad experience, but it does tell you that there's something out there that's impairing the signal that, exactly. that should be addressed. And when it turns to red, it's something you should address because things only get worse. Things only get worse. Eventually, yeah. it will reach a state where the cable modem can no longer compensate for the issue, and the CMTS is still making saying make these requests to pre-distort your signal, and mm -hmm. the, the cable modem itself will run out of its resources to do that. Mm -hmm. um, and at that point, it will go offline, it will cycle, and try it again. Right. So uh, if you've got red modems out there, especially in-home, near-home, another thing to think about is what could be causing that same issue as far as the modem to go red could also be something that's allowing noise into the plant as well. Very much. Um, we, we see that quite a bit with um, 
folks that do their own in-home engineering, uh, they end up with a uh, unterminated um, splitter. They end up with a section of cable that's just dangling, mm-hmm. and it becomes an antenna. Yeah. Um, anything that's open to the environment will allow signal in. Yeah. So this will give you a tool to attack those problems, and as you attack those, you'll be improving the customer experience because of you reducing ingress in your upstream plan as well. Correct. Yeah. So that's a good segue into our next broadcast, which will not be next week. Next week will be a Techless Tuesday because I will not be here, so we won't be doing Tech Tuesday next week. But the week after, Tim plans on joining me uh, to go through some strategies on dealing with in-home and near-home issues and the tools that we have in Prequalization Analyzer that will allow you to identify those and then maybe pick which ones to tackle first because it can be probably overwhelming when you first bring this tool on and you see all of these red map pins, Mm -hmm. right? Exactly. Like where do you start? Uh, So there's things that you can, um, there's ways that you can kind of decide which ones to prioritize. Right. So we're looking at that and uh, once you do that and you start to reduce that, then you can start to manage those a lot better. And if you have a common impairment, it makes it easier to find because you've gotten rid of some of those in-home. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thanks for joining us. If this video was helpful, please give it a thumbs up. Uh, Feel free to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Just click the subscribe button and then ring the little bell if you want to be notified anytime that we're live. Again, we'll be back here uh, same time, 3 o'clock, but in two weeks, that would be October 1st, uh, to talk about DOCSIS P&M, and that would be in-home, near-home issues and how to prioritize those. And we will see you then. Thanks.